Hi guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. I'm Carl Kichangasam, the resident YouTuber for 2021 with Students Physician Society. Uh, as we speak, I'm actually heading to my last interview of the year. Uh, today, we are interviewing a cardiologist at Mopark Hospital um, in Johannesburg. The last interview of the Physician Subspecialty Series and my last interview as the resident YouTuber for the year. So, uh, I guess it's it's a little bit bittersweet. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and comment um, in the video below. I hope you guys really enjoy this video, get some insight into the field of cardiology and what it takes to be a cardiologist. Cardiology is a beautiful specialty. So enjoy and I'll see you in the hospital. Cardiology is structured into invasive and non-invasive cardiology. Yeah. And non-invasive cardiology is quite a field. And a lot of the sexy stuff done here as well. <laughs> so, you know, plants, esophageal echoes. Yeah. But we can discuss it later. Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. I've got a really awesome guest today, uh, Dr. Isop, and we are interviewing him at Mopar Hospital. He's a cardiologist and he's going to be taking us through cardiology and everything, uh, not everything, because we can't do that, but uh, what it entails. So I really hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you so much for joining us, Doctor. It's a pleasure, Dr. <laughs> so Doctor, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got to where you are today? Do you want my autobiography? Yes, that would be pretty cool. Well, you know, most folks, their favorite subject is themselves. <laughs> so I don't know where to start. But uh, I started at Vich University by default as a medical student. So you want us? <laughs> well, <laughs> by default. <laughs> and then I, by design, I didn't start, I started my cardiac training at uh, Cape Town, the Hill Hospital, mm. in the Chris Barna days. Oh, wow. And then uh, um, I got a scholarship to the UK, so I ended up in the UK for 10, 15 years. Sure. And then, uh, this is back in the early 90s when things were changing here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I bumped into Pinky Sorelli, uh, who was one of the early cardiologists uh, on, the, on the circuit, um, who was busy recruiting cardiologists to come back to South Africa. So I met him at a cardiac meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bits Medical School's cardiac division was starting to run into trouble, especially at Barron. In fact, there was no specific cardiac unit at Barron. Mm -hmm. And so I came back to spend just a year and I ended up spending the rest of my remaining life there. So I was at Bad and on mm -hmm. the teaching staff at the medical school at Lids mm -hmm. um, for about five years ago. We just when, when, we, when we resigned, sorry to say that. Um, and we're now based primarily at Mobile in Harvard City. Mm -hmm. So I guess you could, if I had to write title my autobiography, I would title the accidental cardiologist. <laughs> Because uh, again, autobiographically, when I started uh, in, 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 uh, in medicine, it was by default. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. And there's a bearing on, on your fellow students. I'm sure a lot of you didn't know what you wanted to do yeah, at school. Definitely. So, in this video, we're dealing with cardiology. So, can you tell us a little bit about what cardiology is and what it entails? Now, I don't want to make the other disciplines jealous because they're very <laughs> jealous. Okay? So just to give you a bit of a sort of overview of things, in, in cardiology generally about 40% of internal medicine is cardiology. Yeah. And so any self-respecting internist should know some cardiology <laughs> at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. So they are already cardiologists in embryo. The second thing to say is that in any cardiology, in any internal medicine division, wherever you go in the world, you know, whether you're in Chicago or, or, or here in Soweto, the division of internal medicine, or the department of internal medicine, has all its subdivisions. And of these subdivisions, cardiology is the Cinderella discipline. Yeah. And the reason for that is because we are the guys who bring in the most money, mm -hmm. which should not be affected in your choosing to be <laughs> Let me, I'm going to come back to that. Yeah. I feel very strongly about this. But we also generate the most amount of motion. Mm. And, and, and I'm going to boast a little bit because I'm boasting for my fellow cardiologists, not for me, for their achievements. Yeah. That I think 
that the progress that was made in cardiology in terms in relative to the other special specialty has been far more mm. than any of them. We've changed the natural history of heart disease. So to think about cardiology as a speciality, it's actually multiple specialities in one. Yeah. So we have interventional cardiology, we have invasive, uh, uh, one invasive cardiology. In the interventional cardiology, that's where we do all the coronary work, the electrophysiological work with pacemakers and uh, arrhythmia and treatment, where we're doing what we call ablations. Mm. And uh, um, these days, much to the disgust of the cardiac surgeons, we also must see on the valvular side of it. Yeah. So hitherto we were doing valve, uh, open mitral valves, for example, with balloon angioplasties, that kind of thing. But we now actually got to a stage in, in cardiology where we're actually able to implant valves percutaneously. Really? So from a little hikey in the groin, <laughs> yeah. or, or doing cut downs in the subclinic, yeah. we can implant valves. Wow. And so the cardiac surgeons are not talking to us. <laughs> But the thing about cardiology I wanted to say with the state also is that it's, it's, it's a discipline where it, it combines the surgical side of life with the internist. The internist is the intellectual, yeah, you know, sits and thinks about Krebs cycle and how it fits into heart failure, for example, and he does. Um, but it combines the two. And that's what attracted me. I think, you know, cardiology needs you to have a pretty good grasp of physiology. Yeah. So if you're going to think of doing cardiology, you better like physiology. Yeah, 100%. Because otherwise don't do it. Okay? You need a smetting of anatomy and uh, you need a profound knowledge of music. Because I was driving over here on the to, this, to this interview and just by happen chance the, this music that we're playing on the radio with the rhythm of the night. Do you know the song? Yes. And I thought to myself, it encapsulates cardiology, absolutely. <laughs> there's rhythm, the ECG, and there's night work, lots of it. And that's going to be my theme song for the next uh, cardiac meeting I do, the rhythm of the night. So, um, bench work, yes. For the ladies, is it a career? Yes. For the surgical types or lust after blood? Yes. But you need commitment yeah. and you need a degree of self-honesty. Mm. Don't fool yourself and go into cardiology because you're thinking of money. Um, I think you've mentioned how your career has also taken you overseas. And I wanted to ask how for, for the young medical student, if you want to dream beyond South Africa. The training in South Africa is becoming a problem. Yeah. Cardiac training. Yeah. I'm not commenting on the other disciplines. Mm. A lot of the cardiac training units have collapsed. And so getting training now, a good training, I was fortunate in many ways that I started with a decent training here and then I was in, you know, overseas. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a problem. Whoever's taking up cardiology training now, getting a, a decent training program is uh, going to be an issue. And so when I thought about this uh, uh, this morning, when I got up and tried to say something about this and now that you said it, I think uh, you might need to go overseas. Mm -hmm to get onto a good training program, acquire you know, the, pro, the skills there and come back. You know, part of the training comes from yourself. Yeah. When they say physician, heal thyself, what they actually meant was train yourself, okay? It has to come from you. You've got to go out and seek the knowledge yeah. and look for it. Look for it physically yourself mm -hmm. and then learn. But part of it is also mentorship, you know, the environment that you're in. And God willing, one day if you, become, if you guys become chiefs of service, one of the functions that you will have to create the milieu, the environment for them, yeah. for training. So it's a two, two factorial thing that you have to have the environment to allow you to learn. There's no point, and in South Africa, unfortunately, that's what's happening in our state hospital, that it's very hard to be able to learn when the switch pipes are leaking. Yeah, um, and I think now also going, going to more like your day to day sort of. Um, interactions and what you do on a day to day. Firstly, let's start with what are the main presentations or uh, pathologies that you see on a day? Well, it depends where you work. Yeah. You know, if you're working in a place like Marijuana, which I have the of the Joe Gen, um, a lot of people start off with heart failure and hypertension. <laughs> um, there's a lot of general consults that can be dished out, and you've got to know your general medicine. Yeah. You know, to, to, to do those properly. And uh, my personal working day these days, but I just don't have what you can. 
But my working life from day to day changes. Mm. It starts with outpatients, it goes to ward rounds, clinical ward rounds on the ward, it moves to the cath lab. But in between, there's lots of echo work being done because we all train to be echo cardiologists mm. as well. And um, yeah, and the other thing, obviously, that this, you, you bundle up your family life a bit. So your view, your prospective cardiologists need to be aware that uh, family life will, will, will be an issue. So please be careful. Yeah. Can you also learn a little bit about how you feel that COVID has impacted your, your field? It's impacted a lot, yeah. but it's impacted not in specifically cardiac. But yeah. what, what happened was because you know we were short staffed. I mean, we got we got wet. Millpark uh, and, and, and Garden, Garden City had a huge number. In fact, we got a, a lot of the very, very sick uh, COVID patients. And my colleagues, and I speak on their behalf now, we were having patients being flown in by, by helicopter and ambulance. In fact, one of them crashed, you know, going to fetch a patient from the Maritzburg, and five people died, including the, the, the cardiac anesthetist. So sure. it was very bad. Yeah. But uh, so we got hammered, and a lot of them, because they were so ill, you know, they were ventilators, we were short staffed, and so we got all hands on deck. And so everyone, cardiology took a back seat. Mm -hmm. You know, we were even trying to recruit medical students to come and help. Oh. And, 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 and uh, so, so uh, and GPs too. And so um, a lot of the cardiologists were co opted onto COVID duties. Uh, some, some, some of the COVID work, uh, COVID illnesses, was cardiac. But I mean, that just really represented the fact that these were critically ill patients yeah. and you've got a 60 year old, you know, who's bound to have some chronic problems. Mm -hmm. And now he's been going through this huge biological stress of COVID. So he gets a heart attack, it's not a surprise. Mm -hmm. And then there was this whole story about, you know, thrombosis, cognitive thrombosis, and pulmonary uh, embolism and thrombosis. Um, but, you know, how did COVID impact on us? Very badly. Mm -hmm. We are tired. Yeah. The third wave is. Um, now I'm seriously joking about uh, applying for a job as a librarian somewhere. <laughs> so you know what I mean. Seriously joking? No. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it affected all the disciplines, yeah. not just cardiology. I mean, you know, pulmonology was hit very bad. I can imagine. The neurologists, I must say, give, take my hat off to them, volunteer. Some of the surgeons, the plastic surgeons and other general surgeons volunteer. Mm. I take my hat off to them. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And I think you, you already touched a little bit on that whole work-life um, sort of balance that one tries to achieve. What advice would you give um, to you know, other viewers and to yourself as a younger person in terms of that whole Well, my race is run. So now I think more of the, the, the leisure side of it. Yeah. But that hasn't quite happened yet. Um, yeah, you know, look, the American ethos of work hard, play hard. You yield, yield dividends. Mm. By all means, you know. Play hard, but then you must work hard as well. Mm. But you, again, for the hundredth time, I have to say that you have to be prepared to give up free time. Yeah. Um, something that I always found interesting was the perspective as a person of color graduating in apartheid South Africa. So, can you tell me a little bit about that? But look, that's a loaded question. Yeah, very interesting. And, and I must say that you can interpret it many different ways. I can give you the, the soft story part of it, you know, it goes down well always, to say that we were the underprivileged and we were. When we started in medicine, I mean, I think we had a limited number of spaces between 6 and 10 yeah. in a class of 150 you know, white kids. Mm. And I never sat next to a white person in my life yeah. when I got to medical school. And because of the old uh, days, I mean, in terms of the preclinical years, it was okay, but once we went to the clinical years, we weren't allowed into the white ward. Mm. We weren't allowed to use the white uh, hospital transport, which you guys are privileged to use. And so we used to call ourselves the platform bus boys because that's what we did. Yeah. We, we traveled from the old medical school to the various hospitals by platform bus. Mm. When we went out to whiteboards, obviously you can find to and uh, uh, I think Coronation Hospital yeah. in those days. And a small part of the old job gym, which was called the non-European hospital, the NEH. Sure. And uh, when we graduated, and again, this is uh, something a bit like, sobbish, but <laughs> Uh, we graduated pretty well uh, yeah. in the class, but when we started uh, uh, our uh, internships, we were paid a third less in our white class sure. in the same ward, yeah. under the same roof, which is treating the same patients. And uh, if you ask me, there's a rather specific question that you had. Getting trained post was always going to be a bit difficult. Mm. And when I got into cardiology at UCT, I was the first, my, in fact I am, 
the first one I thought all the, uh, wow. all the fellow ever in wow. the history of the sleep. Wow. So, uh, yeah, it's been different in those years. Mm. We focus on a lot more choice now. Yeah. And in a way, I envy you. Your careers are much more open, the opportunities are much more. Mm. And if all, it, it all remains to be seen, how well you use the opportunities. We'll try our best. <laughs> we can only try our best. I hope you do. Yeah. Um, I just want to thank you. Thank you thank so you. much for, for allowing us and giving us this opportunity to just sit with you and just hear, um, share some of your stories. Um, and thank you for giving up your time and, uh, and all of that stuff. Dr. Do you have any mouse audience for, for us? Yeah, good luck. Good luck. And don't be scared of us. <laughs> That's the plan. Thank you so much. Oh, okay, it's a pleasure. Did you know that laughing 100 times is equivalent to 15 minutes on a stationary bike? And you burn more calories sleeping than you do watching TV.